All right, this will be a quick one. I'm just gonna show the Venturi jet pump that I built for the uh, gas tank for the boat that I'm building. This is the original uh, fuel tank that came on the boat. The boat was carbureted, so it does have a carbureted style fuel tank. And it has this uh, like L-shaped tank because there was a seat that sat on the top of this uh, tank that is no longer gonna be in the boat. So I cut this tank up because I was going to uh, modify it. I was gonna, you know, just fill out, or box out the uh, stepped portion um, to get some more tank capacity. And then I was gonna put a divider wall in the back and uh, put a EFI fuel pump in there. Um, I ended up just deciding to build a new tank. But uh, anyway, uh, the, like I said, this is a carbureted style tank, so there's only one pump uh, pickup for it. There's no return, and there's no uh, sump or baffle or anything to try to keep the fuel around the fuel pump. And uh, that's kind of a problem with EFI. Um, with a carburetor, you have like, you know, a cup or so of fuel in the fuel bowl. So if the, the fuel sloshes to one side of the tank or front or back or away from the pickup, that's not really too much of an issue because the uh, engine will just keep running on the fuel that's in the carburetor bowls. With an EFI system though, that's a real problem because like uh, if the pump inlet becomes uncovered, it instantly loses fuel pressure and the engine will just shut off. If you've ever driven a car with like a flat bottom fuel cell like this, you know that like you can't run it under like a quarter tank or a third tank or so, because if you go around a corner or stop or whatever, it uncovers the pump and the engine just shuts off. So uh, we wanna be able to use all the fuel that's in the tank. So the new tank here, I built with a divider wall in here um, and the pump will be in the back portion. So we need to pump fuel from the front portion into the back portion. So of course we have the fuel pump return going into the back portion, but we also need to suck fuel from there into there so that we keep that full. So we've got Walboro 450 in here, going through a regulator. Then of course you'd have your, your fuel rail and fuel pump or fuel filter here. And then our return coming in into the Venturi jet pump. So the way that this works, this is a cutaway of what I built. This is just a uh, 6AN uh, gauge adapter fitting with a hose barb screwed into the gauge adapter port. Um, when I originally put this together, um, I put it together just as is with no jet in it uh, to see if that would work and it would not really pump any fuel because uh, it just wasn't high enough velocity. So th the way that this works is that the, uh, high, the high velocity fuel coming out of this jet creates like a low pressure zone in here through the Venturi effect and it sucks fuel into this port and going out. So you end up with more fuel going out the outlet than what you have coming in the inlet. So um, to make that fitting, or to make the, the, the jet in there, I actually just took a piece of brass rod in my lathe and uh, machined it so that it was a like an interference fit into that fitting and then drilled a 156 thousandths hole through the center of it. And then I just, you know, tapped it into that fitting with a hammer. So it's just kind of a light press fit. Um, like I said, I tried it without it and it would not work. I, I went online and couldn't really find any information on how to build one of these. There's quite a few places that sell like pre-built ones, but they're very expensive. And, um, just kind of looking at the pre-built ones to get tips on it or, you know, a design clue of how to make one. The pre-built ones have really, really small orifices in them. Like I, I can't tell just, but just looking at the picture, it looks like maybe, a 60 or 80 thousandths of an inch orifice. So I thought I would try a bigger one and or a bigger orifice and get less back pressure in the return line and just see how that would work. And if I had to go smaller, I'd do that, but it works great the way that it is. So um, the way I originally intended this to work, I have this little uh, hump welded in the bottom of the tank with a fitting screwed in it. And I was gonna have uh, these hoses connected here, but um, this wouldn't create enough vacuum uh, tr tr pumping air to pull the fuel up the hose. You'd get, the fuel would come up about, you know, an inch or whatever and then stop. Uh, the Venturi pump doesn't pump air very well. It pumps, once it, once it primes itself and gets fuel flowing, then it pumps really good, but it just can't suck air that well. Um, so I ditched, or I'm ditching this idea and I ended up just 
uh, turning the fitting so that that hose barb just sits against the bottom of the tank. And then uh, right now it's loose, but uh, I'll get a uh, like an AN swivel fitting so that I can lock that down and uh, keep it where it needs to go. So, yep, it just exits straight through on that side. So I'll turn on the pump here and see it working. So uh, as far as the fuel flow rate of this Venturi pump, so this this uh, um, boat at like cruising speed will burn, you know, maybe like 10 gallons uh, per hour. You know, that's uh, that's somewhere around like 100, 120 horsepower, um, which would cruise this boat at probably 35, 30, 35 miles an hour. So I, that's that's a pretty realistic cruising speed. So if you do the math on that, in order to keep up with the fuel flow rate of the motor at cruise, um, we only need to pump uh, about one gallon of fuel through the Venturi pump uh, every five minutes in order to keep up with the demand of the engine and never pump that little reservoir dry. Um, so we started with probably a gallon and a half of fuel in there and it's almost empty. So it definitely does not take five minutes to pump one gallon of fuel. Um, so there, it will be basically, it will be practically impossible to run the little well in the back of this dry because we're pumping fuel in faster than the engine can consume it. Um, and yeah, so the, the idea is that we can use all the fuel in the tank now because we will pump this front uh, well dry and pump it back into the uh, reservoir around the pump. And then, you know, we can pump that rear reservoir since it's, since it's a small area kind of contained around the pump, we can probably pump that out so that there's only a half a gallon of fuel in there. Getting down here, we'll oh, already pass the... So yeah, anyway, that works great. Um, that should really solve any fuel starvation issues before they happen. All right, cool. Thanks.